Hi YouTube friends and family. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be doing a Cricut 101. I'm going to go over as many products as I possibly can, including terminology, materials, tools. So stay tuned. I'd like to share a few of Cricut's accessories. One of their newest accessories that's compatible with Cricut Design Space and creating items with their products is the Cricut Mug Press. So this right here is an accessory that you would use. They also have blanks that they've created that you can buy in like two or six packs and they're even offering I've seen online which I love in bulk where you can buy like 36 or 72 of their blanks which are reasonably priced. I'm, I'm really impressed with Cricut on this one. Also the Cricut Maker Machine I will link in the description my review if you want to check it out on whether you should or shouldn't buy a Cricut Maker Machine. I definitely have some pros and cons that I've shared completely honestly. Another accessory with Cricut is their heat press. Now I have a nine by nine heat press at times when creating t-shirts, wish that I had the 12 by 12. So I might be getting more heat presses in the future. I won't, don't be surprised on my, my YouTube subscribers if you see me with more and more items added to my craft room. I'm probably going to have to create more shelving and more storage space to house all of my Cricut accessories and materials. One other accessory that is part of the Cricut family is a Cricut light board. Now I've used Cricut light board to help me when I'm weeding. It has a little cord that plugs right into the USB port on the side of your Cricut machine. I can just set it right here on my crafting table and set some of my weeding projects on there that are difficult to see and it helps me weed. The biggest thing that I've actually used it for though is when doing infusible ink with the ink pens. So your first drawing you would do with just like a pencil or something or a pen. And then when you set it down on the board, you're gonna flip the other side and you're gonna trace over everything and color it all in using your infusible ink markers or pens and then it's gonna adhere beautifully to your project with your words the right way and not backwards. So this is a great addition to the accessories that Cricut offers. That's just a few of the Cricut accessories. There are others available out there A huge thing that you're going to be using if you have a Cricut cutting machine are mats. So I just want to explain the mats. This one is not a cutting mat. This is a mat that you will be using for heat transfer projects. It's specially designed so that it works much better than using an ironing board. Ironing boards have little holes in them and it makes the heat transfer uneven. You will especially use these when you're using your heat press machine. So investing in a heat press mat is definitely worth its weight in gold to have your projects come out beautifully and seamlessly. Another mat is a self-healing mat. Now it's pretty on one side and the other side is great for measuring. I've used mine a lot for measuring paper as well as fabric. It has a special self-healing quality to it and it protects your surface of your crafting tables. I also wanted to take a second and show you my big mat here. One of the things that I really love about this along with my rotary cutting tool is using it to cut fabrics and being able to lie fabrics on top of this and then just use my rotary cuddling tool on this self-healing mat. It's perfect and I love it. There's also Cricut 
mats that are used for our cutting machine. You will actually put your material onto these mats and then feed them into your machine for them to cut your project. Whether you're using them for foam or leather or fabric or paper. So I'm just going to do a quick little review. The blue is the light grip mat. Light grip is something that you would use more for paper projects and maybe even possibly cardstock projects. And I also have one in a 12 by 24 size. Your Cricut design space will allow you to design from the design space for a 12 by 12 mat or a 12 by 24 mat. Now you can also use these 20, 12 by 24 mats to create projects that are much larger than that. You would just have to cut them in different segments. The pink mat right here is used for fabric. So this is your fabric mat. You're gonna wanna only use it for fabric. So make sure you have it set aside and don't use it to cut any of your other materials. You don't want to affect the integrity of any of these mats. So make sure that you use them for what they're intended for. And then you have your strong grip mat. Now this is something that you're gonna use for cutting wood or leather. And at the same time, I would advise to invest in some painter's tape. When you're cutting wood and leather, even the strongest of the strong grip mats, even if they're brand new, are not gonna hold perfectly for projects like wood and leather. So I suggest investing in some painter's tape to help adhere your project down to the mat. And painter's tape is great because it'll be sticky and it'll hold down, but it's also meant to be able to be removed without ripping off whatever surface it is taped onto. And last but not least, but the most popular that I use, and you probably will too, depending on your projects, are the standard grip mats. I probably have three of these, and I've really gotten the use out of them. Now you can clean these mats. I suggest, there's all kinds of cleaners and different suggestions out there, but what I suggest is just warm, hot, soapy water, rinse them off every now and again, and just let them dry and they'll get their nice little tacky back. You don't have to go and buy brand new mats all the time. You can definitely extend the life on them by washing them every now and again and keeping them clean. The next thing that I wanna show you are Cricut tools that you will be using. The first one is a non-Cricut product and that is a lint roller. Lint rollers are going to be really important for you to use when you're doing infusible ink projects. You're going to use it to clean your surfaces of any debris, with any visible or invisible to the naked eye debris on your project so that when you do your infusing of that ink, it's going to be beautiful as possible. Another Cricut tool is the trimmer. And I love this thing to cut and trim cardstock as well as when I have excess material from creating infusible ink projects, heat transfer, and adhesive vinyl projects, I can just simply use this to slice and cut really easy. I keep it right on my crafting table and it's super nice and easy. And this little side also folds out so that you can do some measurements and measure if you need to make a project. Like say you wanted a cut your 12 by 12 and a half. This would be super nice and easy to help you line that up and cut. A tool that you're going to be seeing me if you are a subscriber on my channel that I use a lot when I'm adhering my projects to the mat is a brayer or a roller. I love this tool. It's so great. Another tool that I use especially when I'm cutting fabric is my rotary cutter. I love this tool and it's got a nice little safety plastic on the edge there 
and just when you want to cut you just kind of pull this button down here and it locks into place and as you can see the blade is exposed and then to release it there's a lock button it's blue on my rotary cutter and it pops that plastic edge back around your blade for safety. I also have just a regular pair of Cricut cutting scissors. Now, tweezers can be really handy with your Cricut projects when you're trying to remove little pieces, especially like part of the weeding process. If there's some things that are just giving you trouble or they're really tiny, this can help. It can also just help pull like paper off of your mat. If you're really worried about it ripping and tearing, you can use this as well as the scraper tool. And that's what this one is right here. The scraper tool I often use with my paper crafting projects to prevent them from tearing and ripping, especially if I'm cutting like letters and words or smaller items or even little um, gift tags just to stick it on there and pop it right off so that I don't tear it. This is a weeding tool. Weeding, I will discuss it in another part of the video, but this can be used when you're creating heat transfer or adhesive vinyl projects and you're removing the scrap material that's not part of your Cricut project design. And these are Cricut scraper tools. You can also call them squeegees. They are used to adhere our, our materials that we're using to create our projects onto our blanks or our surfaces that we're putting our cut materials onto. Okay, so this is a scoring stylus. I actually don't think I've used it because I do have scoring tools that are in my swap out housing. It came with a tool set. So I'm gonna go over some of the actual blades and housing and tools. I just want to open up my machine to show you where these items would go. So the stylus would actually go in where the pens and markers would go, which is your A side of your machine. And then all of your blades and all of your housing all of these different types of engraving tools and rotary cutting would go in this right side and clamp the side of your maker machine. The number one most used blade for many, many projects, especially just cutting um, heat transfer, vinyl, adhesive vinyl, is your fine point blade. And it just looks like this. There's also scoring blades in what they call a swap out housing. Swap out housing is just this part right here that is compatible with different tools that you can swap on and swap out onto it. And you just push the top part button and then slide and then release and it's on there. This is a single scoring tool, and I also have a double scoring tool. I'm just gonna hold these up closer to the camera so that you can see them. And then I have a deep point blade here. You can see that they have different colors sometimes with the blades. Um, I don't have a fabric cutting. It's very similar to the fine point blade, but they usually have it in pink, which also coincides with their pink fabric mat. So it's kind of nice to keep it so that you're not um, dulling your blades. You just have separate blades for the projects that you use. Also, the knife blade, which you would use for um, like cutting wood and possibly deep thick leather projects. And then there's the rotary blade. Now these two seem like they're swap out housing, but they are not. The tops look similar to a swap out housing, but they are not. They have their own special housing for the knife blade and for the rotary cutting knife blade. And these are sharp, so be careful. This one's nice, it comes with a little 
protective cap on it, but this one does not. So you just make sure that you're careful. Here, this will go on my swap out housing. It's compatible with the swap out housing that I showed you earlier, right here. And this is an engraving tool. So you can use this on like the metal that I show for the materials. This one I haven't even taken out of the package yet, but I'm excited to use it. It's a debossing tip. And what it will do is it's gonna create um, like a depression into your project to give it some texture. And it's gonna be perfect and great to add to homemade cards. So I'm super excited. I was hoping to possibly use it on leather projects, but I, as you can see, I haven't taken it out of the package yet. So I'm not sure how it's gonna work with depressing and leaving like an indented design into leather, but maybe it's something that I can try out in a future video. I forgot to mention, this is another tool. I went over every single other one and blade, but I forgot to mention the true control knife. So I'd like to show you some materials that you can use with a Cricut machine. This is one that I have yet to use because I do not have a printer that will allow me to feed this thick material in it, but it is printable sticker paper. And I think that's going to be something that some of you are going to just love to use and enjoy using. So I don't have a lot to share because I haven't made anything yet, but stay tuned with my channel. And one of these days I will definitely have a printer where I'll be able to use this paper. Foam. I have multiple different colors here. You can use larger pieces of foam. If it can fit on your mat, your machine can cut it. Paper is another material, whether it's cardstock or crafting paper. So I have some little pieces of paper and then I have bigger sheets of cardstock. Other materials include leather. This is actually Cricut brand leather. I also have some faux leather that I purchased um, online. Faux leathers that the Cricut Maker Machine can cut. Another material is aluminum sheets. This is Cricut brand. I have not used this yet, but it is something that I'm looking forward to use and create in a future project. And then we also have wood. This is basswood, and I have done a couple wood projects. And there's also a, like a veneer wood and different types of wood that Cricut offers. Another material is felt. This is a nice little felt pack that Cricut offers and is available. I just want to say that if you check in my description of this video, there's affiliate links down there that I'll have a lot of these products where you can just click and order them yourselves really easily just from my description on this video. There's no additional fee or charge to you by clicking my link. However, I may receive a small commission if you click my links to order your materials for your projects. Other materials include different types of vinyl, and you'll hear terminology such as HTV. HTV simply stands for heat transfer vinyl, and right here is a heat transfer vinyl example. Heat transfer vinyl can be offered in patterns, like you'll see there's uh, multiple different patterns that came in this pack here, and you can also get heat transfer vinyl in solid colors. Heat transfer vinyl is also a different term for iron-on. Another material is infusible ink sheets. Infusible ink sheets, just like with heat transfer vinyl, can be available in patterns or in solid colors. Another material that you will use is transfer tape. 
And it's not something that our machine will cut, but it is a material that you will be using specifically when you use vinyl. Vinyl that is not heat transfer vinyl is considered adhesive vinyl. It is something that you would use almost like a sticker or a decal. However, this particular one is removable vinyl. So it's not as sticky, it's not gonna adhere and last as long, but it can be something that you wanna put on um, temporarily that you will be able to remove, whether it's on a wall or on just a simple little plaque for a holiday and you wanna swap it out when the holidays change. So that would be a reason for the removable vinyl. But mostly, you're probably going to be using Cricut Premium Vinyl that is permanent and will adhere to your surfaces when applied properly. I made numbers for my mailbox with this permanent vinyl and it's lasting through rain and snow and sleet and the temperature changes from summer to fall and spring and winter. So Cricut Premium Vinyl really is great. Another sort of material that you'll be using is butcher paper. And butcher paper is something that you'll be hearing a lot when you do infusible ink projects. Butcher paper is something that you're going to be using to protect your mat and also your heat press when you're doing the infusible ink projects so that the ink isn't infusing into your heat press or into your mat. And another material that should come inside of your infusible ink packages is these little cloths. You should have a nice little cloth like this that comes in the box of your infusible inks and you will use it to clean your surfaces that you're going to apply the infusible ink onto. Another material that you will be using possibly is heat transfer tape. And you see I have mine on this cute little gold tape dispenser. And this is actually heat transfer tape from Cricut. And what you can use it for is to tape down your projects, whether it's onto, for example, a coaster or a mug to make sure that your infusible ink transfer sheet is nice and snug to your project, you may be using heat transfer tape. Another material that you may be using that is part of the Cricut family are infusible ink pens. And you will be using infusible ink pens with your machine through Design Space Another material that you may be using as part of your projects are pens. I have writing pens, um, calligraphy pens, and um, glitter pens. Something you might use these for are creating gift tags or cards. Okay, so I want to take this time right now to go over blanks. The term blanks. Blanks are something that you will be using, and I will show you some examples, to put your created project onto, whether it's infusible ink or adhesive vinyl. So I'm gonna show you a couple that I have handy. For infusible ink, I have quite a few to show you. Infusible ink, here's a little cute little baby bodysuit. Cricut also has what they call cosmetic or makeup bags available, but they can be used for pencil cases, mask cases, all kinds of things. And then also infusible ink t-shirts. Infusible ink does not work on cotton. It has to be more of a polyester, mostly polyester shirt. So Cricut has their own line of shirts that are compatible with their infusible inks. Then they also have tote bags. There's a couple different sizes. This one's a 14 by 14, and this one's a 19 by 14 tote bag. And these are infusible ink compatible. 
There's also infusible ink coasters. You can use the infusible ink sheets to create coasters. You can also use the infusible ink markers or pens. Other types of blanks would be things that you would use heat transfer vinyl on or adhesive vinyl. So I have these cute little signs that I am going to put some designs on. I have an idea for the one that I'm going to do on the big one. I'm going to do a cute quote and I'm going to hang it up. I have a nice little spot right above my window across the room for me. You could possibly do heat transfer vinyl and you could possibly also do adhesive vinyl. And then same thing with this cute little sign here. Adhesive vinyl or heat transfer vinyl could potentially go on these cute little canvases. A few more blanks that I want to show are tumblers. This is a wine tumbler and this is a wine glass and these are great for adhesive vinyl. Another potential blank that you could use for adhesive vinyl are ornaments. You can create your own custom ornaments, fill them up with whatever you want. You can make them into glitter. You could just simply fill them up with whatever you want or leave them completely empty on the inside and just put a cute little adhesive vinyl saying on them. Put a little ribbon on top. These are great blanks for adhesive vinyl. And then there's just little tumblers like this that I've picked up at the dollar store that you can add some kind of a saying on it. Like this is more of a patriotic red and blue color. I might want to add a white little saying, something to do with 4th of July or Memorial Day or something like that. You could just add an adhesive vinyl name or a saying or just a design a picture of fireworks or something cute from Design Space. And then this blank here is not an infusible ink blank. This is just something that I picked up at Michael's. It's just a regular canvas tote. So this would be something that would be really nice for an iron-on. So this is an example of a blank that you would do for heat transfer vinyl or HTV. Now the blanks that I showed you are just a few of an endless possibility. So I will definitely make sure to link in the description some that you can just click the links and go ahead and buy super easy, no additional cost to you. So there's two terminologies that you'll hear a lot when doing Cricut projects, whether you're watching my YouTube channel or other creators videos that I really want to share. One of them is called burnishing. And burnishing is when you use a scraper tool or also can be called a squeegee. And it'd be when you apply your project with your transfer tape. And as you have your transfer tape over your project and you want to adhere it to your project, you will use a scraper to tool to press your material onto your project blank, whatever that surface may be, whether it's an ornament or a cup or a sign. And the actual act of applying pressure to put that material onto the surface is called burnishing. So this right here, would be burnishing your project. And you may hear that on many creators videos. Another term that you're going to hear a whole bunch, I know I've already said it tons of times on my YouTube videos, is weeding. I have a separate section explaining the tools, but this right here is a weeding tool. And weeding is a term that you're going to hear a lot in creators videos, especially here on my YouTube channel. And weeding is when you either have your project on your mat still and you're going to remove all the excess vinyl 
whether it's heat transfer vinyl or adhesive vinyl, that is not part of your project. It would be removing the scrap material. So for example, if I had this on here and I wanted to remove the inside of the A, the inside of the E, the actual act of taking this weeding tool, poking into the vinyl that's not where I want it, and removing it is called weeding. And you will hear that term a lot as a Cricut crafter. So I just wanna do a quick review of the actual machine itself. I did do a review of the Cricut Maker machine. I'll make sure to include that in the description below. So make sure that you check that out. Just some basics of the actual Cricut Maker machine. The machine will open like this. And then down in here you have storage. You also have storage on the side. As you see, I keep most of my tools over there. You can also, if you want to, they have a little bit of a foam bottom so that it'll protect if you want to put your blade, something that has something pointy and sharp in the bottom. It's not going to scratch up any plastic in the bottom. They have like a nice little foam bottom in the storage on the side. And then these are your housing. So you have your clamp for housing any kind of pens, um, infusible ink pens, writing pens, and also, and your scoring pen would fit into this clamp A. Clamp B is where you'll find all of your blades will go in there. And your swap out housing blades, your rotary blade would go in there. You would put this in here and then close it up. You also have, I have them pushed off to the right hand side, but you have your little guides that help feed your mat. But when you're doing certain projects, they're gonna also be a hindrance. So you wanna move them off to the side and out of the way. Sometimes in design space, they'll even give a suggestion for you to move your your feed guides out of the way. And you have your power button, you have your feed button, which is when you put your mat in, you're gonna push the feed button. You have your little cute cricket or a C, that's your start your project button. And then if debris goes crazy or your pen's not writing correctly or something goes awry with your project, you do have a pause button. So in like an emergency situation, you can hit that pause button and it'll stop either writing or cutting. And then on the right hand side, there is a USB port, which is really nice. And on the back side, you have power cord and also a little USB so I can stick this part right into my laptop and then directly create projects hardwired right into my laptop. So I just keep that plugged in and set it behind there. And then the USB port on this side is something that you could use it for is if you have a light board. So then you could just plug it in on the side. And that's pretty much for the walkthrough of the Maker Machine. I hope the content of this video has been helpful to any one of you that are curious about purchasing a Cricut Maker cutting machine, or if you've just recently purchased one, or if you have one at home and you received it and you're just kind of lost, hopefully breaking down just some of the simple things about the machine itself, the materials, the blanks, and some of the terminology in this video has been helpful to you. If so, please take a second and just hit the like button so that I know that this is beneficial and I will keep creating content like this to help all of you creators out there. And if you haven't already purchased a Cricut Maker machine and you are interested in doing so, I will make sure to leave some links in the description to purchase some of the products that I've talked about in this informative video. There's no additional cost to you if you click my links in the description. However, I may receive just a small compensation.
If you have any other questions that I did not cover in the content of this video, please comment your questions in the comment section and I will try and create more informative videos to help all of my creative crafting friends and family out there in YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great rest of your day.